case of Sean Hornbeck. Sean's story happened in Missouri and it makes many of the parents of kids who have gone missing feel like there is hope perhaps that their child might come back. 94% of kids who are kidnapped will be found within the first 72 hours. Odds of that 94% being found alive are only 57%. For this reason, the next story is a multifaceted miracle. Sean was a bright, inquisitive 11-year-old boy riding his bike to a friend's house near Richards, Missouri, just as so many kids do today. He made the trek to his friend's house many times. However, this time there was evil lurking in the form of Mike Devlin, who was out looking for a boy to abuse. Devlin took the opportunity and he hit Sean's bike with his truck, pretending that it was accidental. Devlin initially seemed concerned for Sean's safety, but moments later, once he got him into his truck, he told him he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The community rallied and volunteers and police scoured the woods and roadsides around Sean's home, but to no avail. It shook the small community who knew each other and felt safe from something like this ever happening. Sean's stepdad, who loved him as if he were his own, was seen crying and tirelessly searching through the rough terrain on an ATV despite health problems that meant he was supposed to be at home in bed. He wouldn't give up looking for Sean. The FBI was diligent from the beginning, treating it as if it was an abduction, but they found no indication at all of what happened to Sean, and despite their efforts, the case went cold. In the following four years, Sean's parents, mother and father, Pam and Craig Akers, never gave up. They focused all their time on looking for their son. They paid private investigators, and they even developed a foundation in his name, looking for missing kids. They spent all their savings, their retirement, and they never stopped desperately trying to find Sean. It would later come out that Sean was physically abused throughout his time with Mike Devlin. He had been threatened with the guns Devlin had, saying he would murder him if he thought about leaving. Slowly and systematically abusing Sean into thinking he had to stay with his abuser through fear. Like so many before him in similar situations, Sean suffered from Stockholm Syndrome and stayed. Neighbors had believed that Sean and Devlin were father and son as Sean was seen outside sometimes rollerblading and even getting driving lessons from Devlin. He admitted that he planned to kill Sean years before after he insulted him. He even pulled over and tried strangling Sean. However, it was this time that Sean pledged to do whatever Devlin wanted as long as he let him live. Sean kept his deal with the devil until he was found. Everything changed, however, when Devlin decided to kidnap another boy. The new boy named Ben Ombi from a bus stop on January 8, 2007. The kidnapping of Ben was observed by 15-year-old Michael Holtz, who observed him in the truck crying as the truck peeled out from the bus stop. The neighbor was able to call the police and gave a description of the truck. If it wasn't for that boy, Michael Holtz, the Missouri miracle might not have come true. To put that into perspective, FBI and police from around Missouri searched for more than 72 hours, and on the fourth day they still had not found it. However, that evening, the police went to an apartment complex to serve a warrant on an unrelated person, and an eagle-eyed police officer happened to see the truck. The FBI quickly honed in on Mike Devlin, a 40-year-old pizza restaurant manager, and went to his house to question him about Ben's kidnapping. Devlin was nervous, and instead of answering questions, he kept referring to his godson, Sean, saying that he had to return to him. When the police were finally able to get inside the home, they found Ben and Sean quietly sitting on a sofa. The FBI thankfully realized pretty quickly that not only had they located Ben after that 72-hour mark, which is highly unusual, there was another missing boy there, Sean Hornsbeck, that Devlin was referring to. Both children were thankfully returned to their families, and Devlin was charged with 80 counts of assault, kidnapping, and attempted murder. He would later plead guilty and was sentenced to 72 life terms. It came out in the trial that Devlin used severe, horrific abuse to control Sean and purposely forced him to ride along when he kidnapped Ben to convince Sean that he couldn't go for help because he was now an accessory. Despite this, Sean protected Ben over the next four days to save the boy from the same fate that he suffered. The authorities stated that Sean was a hero. Devlin told Sean that he was only going to keep Ben for a short time and planned to kill him soon after. Sean did everything in his control to keep Ben alive and escape as much abuse as possible. A third boy would later come forward when press coverage showed Devlin's face. Kevin Palmer of Ontario, Canada, 
got a huge surprise when he saw the face of his would-be abductor from 1988 and recognized him instantly when watching the news of Sean's rescue. Palmer had been traveling with his father in Illinois and was back from a video store when Devlin tried to get him to get in his pickup. He got angry when Palmer refused to get in the truck, causing Palmer to run away. A police report was filed of the incident, but Devlin was never located at the time. Not only was this a happy ending for the families of both Ben and Sean, it served as a glimmer of hope for the over 400,000 families that are currently missing their loved ones today. A follow-up story was done on Sean Hornbeck when he was 21. He now has a tattoo on each of his arms. One says respect and the other says faith. He says you need both of them. He says that while he knows he will always be the kidnapped boy from Missouri, he embraces it. He wants it to be his mission to reach out and offer hope to the family's missing loved ones. He is a beacon of hope and he has embraced his freedom. He works at a metal fabricating company and is willing to speak out about his experience. Reporters often show up when kidnapped kids are found years after their disappearance to get his take on what has happened. He says that rather than bring up negative memories for him, it brings up good memories of that first day he saw his parents again. He hopes that one day he will go back to college and get a law degree, but for now he's just taking it one day at a time. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and stay safe out there.